Let's keep go going. on an adventure here and show you guys how we got to this on this Bronco 2022 Bronco. Basically going to have a video series here showing you what it took to get to this. Is it filming? Mm -hmm. It's filming? Mm -hmm. Is it filming? It's filming. It's filming. All right, we're filming. <laughs> All right, Nathan. This is what we're going to work on for the next couple days here. This is a 2022 Ford Bronco Wild Track Sasquatch Edition. Pretty cool vehicle. It's completely bone stock with what, 260 miles on it? Something really low. Got driven around town and got dropped off. It's pretty cool. I like it. Neat interior. This is cool. Look at this, guys. Whoa. It's a Bronco. So, yeah, we got this truck. We did some... I did some looking on the internet to kind of get some initial ideas and figure out how much space is in there. Nathan, can you kill that background for us? So it's a four door Bronco. <clears throat> it's got a good amount of space back here in the back. Got a little flip open floor area, the jack. So, good amount of space. And supposedly, what I've seen online, doing my research, there's a four inch speaker here in the dash, and another one on the passenger side, and then there's, I guess there's speakers down here in the kick panel. And then there is speakers up here. Oh, there's some pods or something right here. Supposedly there's a, oh, excuse me, a four inch speaker in there. So there's four fours and two six and a halfs. And it's, this one's not a, I guess they come with a B&O system and it has a subwoofer mounted over here in the side panel. This one is not a B&O, this is a bass audio system. So I guess it's radio power. So it's powered off the infotainment center in the center of the dash here, which is really cool. It has a, has a really large screen. Oh, there's a button, turn this thing on. Yeah, 265.1 miles. Nice big screen, really slick looking vehicle. So, so I did some some looking online, kind of watched some other people change their dash speakers with some inexpensive dash speakers, and they said it made it sound better. But um, so I have <clears throat> some initial ideas. So we we looked at the vehicle, did some brainstorming, and we basically wanted to come up with a really crazy audio system for this thing so what our plan is is to put some really top of the line focal equipment in this vehicle Moscone amplifiers and such so we have here we have a cart nice big big cart and this carts what four feet wide and two feet deep so there's a lot of gear on this so from looking at the vehicle online and kind of made some 
educated guesses on what we we're going to do in here, we decided to order all this gear for this vehicle. So we're going to start out with got some a bunch of different stuff here. We'll see if we actually can use all this gear. That would be awesome. So this is a Focal K2 Power KX3 kit. So it's a six and a half, three inch and tweeter. So we're gonna put this, hopefully. We're gonna do the six and a half in the kick panel. We're gonna do the three up here in the dash and a tweeter. Do that on both sides. And then, I saw this online, I looked at it, and I'm like, wow, it'd be really cool to add another speaker there. So hopefully we can fit another one of these woofers, which we got a pair of them here. Got another pair here. Let's actually flip this up and open this. Thanks, Nathan. So this is a really awesome kit. We do this kit a lot, actually. It's one of our faves. I actually have this in my or had this in my personal car for a long time so three inch mid iconic yellow cone which is actually kevlar that's why it's yellow it's a kevlar sandwich cone so super awesome mid base driver i'm going to try to get that in the kick panel um pair of mids pair of tweets in the dash and it comes with a bunch of other accessories passive crossovers and some pods and stuff to mount the mids we're not going to be using the passives because we're going to do what's called a fully active system with a DSP. So we got that full set. We got an extra set of mid-base drivers. Got a set of Kevlar 4-inch components, which we're going to try to put in the back pods. We got an extra set because I thought I was going to I'll move on to that now. I thought I was going to do it a four inch. I might do a four inch in the middle of the dash too as a center channel. We're going to look at that situation. Because if you look up in here, there's a little pocket right here. And we're going to try to do a center channel actually. We're going to add a center and we have enough amplification and DSP to do that. So option. My first choice would be doing a half set of these in the front. We'll do a foreign tweeter in the center for center channel. Um, just in case we can't fit that in there, I got an Illusion Audio C3CX. Hold that, Nathan. Yeah. So this kit, actually let's look at this kit real quick. Uh-oh, need a blade. Mm -hmm. Don't have a blade. Let's open this up and see what, show everyone what this looks like. Little baby. Oops. Awesome looking kit. Same four inch Kevlar cone mid range and a inverted Kevlar dome tweeter. Just smaller tweeter than the KX3. Smaller crossovers too. Smaller, everything smaller. It's a shrunken. <laughs> honey, I shrunk the speakers. <laughs> remember that movie? You remember that movie? No. Nope. Honey, I shrunk the kids? No? Nope. Come on. I must be old. Right, let's open this up. So this is plan A. We have plan B here just in case we don't have the real estate up there to fit that. And this is, this is packaged well. This is a really cool speaker. So this is a Illusion Audio C3CX. It's a three inch mid with a little tiny tweeter mounted right there in the middle. So very compact, um, plays from about, it'll, in this particular system, we're gonna play 300 and up, about 300 hertz and up, so. On the center? On the center channel, yeah. So we have some options for a center channel. Get rid of this trash. I'll put it in my pocket for now. Put the razor blade away. Might need that again. So that covers, this is like front speakers here or front and rear speakers. So we'll do a three-way extra mid base in the door. Hopefully we're going to try our best to do that. We have, I have no clue how much depth is in that door. If we can even do it. Um, we're going to have to actually take it apart and see before we start cutting holes we're going to do some measurements and figure that out so hopefully um 
we can get two mid bases on each side. Reason being why we want two mid bases on each side is because we want a lot of mid base. And we're doing something a little out of the ordinary. Let me get rid of this trash. So, front stage. So, now we have a pile of amps, right? So, this is the Moscone Pro 530, which is a five channel amplifier. This is our crazy system we came up with. And we're going to try our hardest to get all this integrated into the vehicle and make it look stock. <laughs> Not going to look stock. Most of it's going to look stock. We're going to utilize as many factory locations as we can. We're going to hopefully add some more, another speaker location in the door. So this is a five channel, 1300 and it's like around 1400 watts of power when all said and done. So it's a five channel amplifier. We're actually going to be, you see we have two of them here. Normally um, systems we do, we'll do two of these to power the whole vehicle. One for the left side of the car, one for the right side of the car. Um, in this case, we're actually going to run one of these Pro 530s to the left front speaker system basically two sixes or one six a three and tweeter so we're going to run this basically in a three channel mode bridge three channel mode to run the left speaker we have another one to run the right speaker so that's an insane amount of power about 2400 or no 26 26 to 28 2800 watts rms on the front speakers crazy right but when you set everything up properly, gains and all that fun stuff, do it properly, you can actually get away with running that much power and have an insane amount of clarity and all that fun stuff. So, we've got DSP accessories here, so let me set that aside. So we got 2600 watts of power on the front speakers. Then we have 130 watts by four, four channel amplifier from Moscone. This is gonna be running the center channel, which is either a half set of the ES100Ks or the C3CX, not sure yet. We're gonna figure that out. And then the other two channels are gonna be running the rears. And then, so we got crazy with 2600 plus, this is, Four, five, something, 500 and something watts running the rears and center. And then we're going to do, let's see. Come on, Nathan. Let's see if, that's let's see if the boxes will fit. <laughs> we're going to do one. Two. I think it'll fit, see? If the boxes fit, it'll fit. Right? <laughs> That's how it works. Oh, there we go. See, look. That was a good guess from looking at pictures online. So we're going to do three K2 power um, tins in a hopefully vented cabinet so we can get the most bass possible, period. We want this thing to be crazy loud with excellent sound quality. So, so we got that. And then we got... Take this out, that's crazy. A thousand watts for that one, a thousand watts for this one, and a thousand watts for this one. So then we got, you know, we got to do that. We got to put that in there, and then we have to put this amp in here somewhere for the, the mids and highs, or the center channel. And then we have two of these, which I'm not going to unbox the other one. We have two of these. Bam, bam. I don't know how we'll fit these in here. Mount them up here or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. So we got two of those, one of those, three of those, three tens. And then we got this guy. This is our digital signal processor. And this is going to do all the crossing over, 
all the can't get the box open. So this right here is the Moscone digital sound sig digital signal processor. So this is 12 channels. 12 channel DSP, so we'll have a basically an amplifier channel. When we're all said and done, we'll have an amplifier channel for every single speaker in the car. The only thing that's going to be running passive through a passive crossover network are the rears. So we'll have to install these. And this basically takes the signal in and then it splits it to the mid bass and the and the tweeter. So we'll actually have to use these. These little passes for the rears because we would need to do another DSP in there to make it completely fully active. But um, yeah, so it's a little bit of gear. Totally abnormal. A lot of power. Lots of power. <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots of power. Um, so yeah, that's what we're uh, we're up against. That's our challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. I have some ideas in my mind about the enclosure. Um, let's just have to start doing measurements and designing and actually figure out if it'll actually work because sometimes you'll have an idea in your mind and it won't work because it doesn't physically fit. So we have to come up with a very creative way to install all this gear, make it look nice, obviously. This is not going to be a stealth install. It's going to take up most of the cargo space, but the whole purpose for this vehicle is to have an amazing stereo system, you know, and it, it needs to play every genre of music really well. Um, we want lots of bass, tons of mids and highs. We're going to do, you know, good, good sound quality, staging, imaging, the whole nine yards, and lots of cool fabrication and stuff like that. So. Definitely an exciting project. It's uh, a lot of gear, as you can see. Um, did I miss anything? Oh, so we got all the gear, and we have ideas on where it's all going to fit in the car. We also want to, first things first, that we're going to do is we're going to start coming up with ideas make sure speakers fit like we need to make sure the kx um three mid bass driver fits in the kick panel um make sure the panel will go back on and see how that all works out then we'll move on to um you know exploring the dash locations to make sure that we can fit the three and tweeter up there i don't know exactly what we're going to do we'll probably end up doing something custom so it looks cool um when we don't have to keep it behind factory grills and make it look stock. We can make it showy because this vehicle is actually going to be go to shows and stuff. So it can be showy and flashy and it's going to be really cool. But we got all the gear, but as far as the foundation goes, we actually have, this is a sound treatment. I know you guys have seen us do sound treatment. Um, <clears throat> this is the, the black hole mat. So we got We got 14. We got 14 of these sheets, and we're gonna. Those are big sheets too. Yeah, they're like double sheets. <laughs> 14 double sheets, so it's like 28 sheets of sound treatment. Um, got all this here. I think it's like 180 pounds of sound treatment. So we got that. We're going to do the whole vehicle. We're going to rip the whole, not rip, we're going to professionally take out the <laughs> interior. I would like to say rip out the interior, but we're going to take, disassemble the whole vehicle. We'll probably end up pulling the top off of the truck. Um, and then, so we can actually get more light in there since the top does come off, um, give us more light and be able to see what's going on easier. Um, so we'll end up disassembling the whole truck, pulling everything out, um, we'll go ahead and start sound treating the whole vehicle and rewind. We need to make sure what we're doing um, as far as speaker locations, write down all the speaker wires that we need to run, where everything's going to go, so we can start coming up with a plan there, get it sound treated, um, and then we'll move into um, 
figuring out maybe the enclosure or the doors. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go with this um, today. But first is getting the vehicle prepped, hooking it up to a power supply, getting it protected with some some paint protection film and pull it apart and go ahead and start rock knocking this thing out. <laughs> all right so we need some thinner i'm gonna try to go cut this on <laughs> oh, we need to make a smaller roll you think it'll work don well, you know. <laughs> you'll find out later what do we need seven inch if that do six inch? Yeah. Okay. See if it comes off the roll now. <laughs> we got music playing in here. Nice. Put it on the table saw. Make it smaller. <laughs> um, I lost my blade. No, I don't. I have it right here. plates. Let me do it this way. Get some protection here because I'm going, to be going in and out of the vehicle a hundred thousand million times. Make sure that we get this little area right here protected. So now we're gonna, we got some paint protection film on the vehicle. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this, this dash grill off. Um, supposedly there's a four inch driver in there. And then we also have down here in the kick panel. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get most of the car disassembled before we um, try to get those out. Go ahead and get some of the stuff moved out of the way. I just want to take a quick look up here to see what's what's going on in the dash. Let's see if I can get a pry tool in here. It's, looks like it's underneath the dash pad, so gotta definitely come. So, okay, so that just unclips. And then, yeah, it's about like a four inch driver. So, seven millimeter, that's a good assumption. It's either a seven or a 5.5. Yep. But it seems like Ford's, Ford went over to the seven millimeter. And stuck with it. And stuck with it, finally. <laughs> that side could be 5.5. We don't know yet. <laughs> Right, or one five point five one seven. Yeah. Yeah. So seven millimeter pops right out, and then okay, nice. 
So, all right, cool. So that's, that plug looks familiar, doesn't it? It looks like the either the Ford uh, truck or the Mustang. Mm -hmm. One of the two. We'll have to check them. We have those here, so we'll have a we'll have a plug, I guess, for that, so we don't have to cut anything. In this truck, we're going to run wires, mm -hmm. but um, we should have that plug. Cool. So yeah, four inch. Looks like a really high end speaker. <laughs> Little four inch uh, full range, I guess. This seems to be the norm these days with uh, car manufacturers doing like four inch or three inch. Well, this is actually bigger than most. Usually do like a two and three quarter, or sometimes three inch. This is a, looks like a four inch driver. So cool. So we got a four there and then I guess set that aside. I want to go look at that pod in the back. Let me move my, my woofers out of the way. We'll go on the other side, Nathan, maybe. The inside? Yeah. So you can let them see. Boink. This. Look at there. Look at that. Okay. I think these just pop off. Look at that. Okay, so looks like the same speaker. It's a Phillips. Yep. All right, but yeah, cool. Look, look at that. Looks like the same plug as the front right there. So that's good. So it's the same speaker, same little four inch two tab front and rear. So we should be able to fit this guy in here. Looks about the same, almost. These tabs might be in the way, I'm not sure yet, but should be able to get that four right up in there, which would be great. And then we'll have to figure out where to put the tweeter, but that four will definitely fit, hopefully, in there. So I'll just push this back on for now. And then we'll go ahead and, Nathan, let's go ahead and um, work on sound treatment. But I think, um, according to a lot of stuff, I think the top will come off, which will help us tremendously with lighting and being able to see what we're doing. We don't really need the top for anything. These are mounted to this bar. The top comes off. Yep. Feel we'll, less claustrophobic. Oh, no, it'll be wide open. It'll be <laughs> great, man. You'll be able to see what's going on. You'll be able to get some good footage of this thing. So. Cool. Awesome. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and get the top off and find a home for it and go ahead and start jamming. Let it go when you
Center channel active. Good. Yeah. Be good. Just worried about that mid base, Nathan. Hopefully, it has enough mid base. It's the only thing I'm worried about. It's definitely a better location than a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. It has to be sealed boxes. So it's horrible. Yeah. 150 hertz and up. So, what do you say we call it a night? Or do you want to work more? You're down for whatever? Whatever. Whatever. I mean, you can start doing speaker wires. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need to do next. Or doors. I would do speaker wires first. Mm -hmm. you can twist them up. I can actually help you. You can twist them, yeah. pull them all. We'll twist them, label them, and get them ran. Might as well. Still. I'm done poking around. I got a process process what I looked at in my brain. Tomorrow I'll have all kinds of good ideas. So let's make speaker wires. So Nathan and I just made spaghetti. No. <laughs> we just uh, twisted these wires together. As can they're all twisted now we got them pairs so now they're two speaker wires in each bundle so now we have a 12 of two 12 gauge two 16 gauge for the left and right speakers and then a uh, two 16 gauges we're gonna run in this vicinity over here for the center channel which is not there yet that we're gonna figure out how to do but we're just basically prepping so we'll run all of our wiring down this factory channel all the way back into the back where the amplifiers are going to go got those prepped so we can go ahead and get those laid in here um we have a bunch of other wires to run as well so we'll figure that out but at least we got that stuff prepped for now we're slowly winding down for the evening so i, I think say, we i say we prepped a little bit better than forward didn't we the, the yeah, wiring. I would say so. They didn't <laughs> do any prep. It's just kind of like tie wrap down. It's kind of weird. Very different, but it works, I guess, right? So we got it all prepped up. We can get these laid in here and then kind of do a little recap and figure out what's next. All right, guys. So today, I guess day one is a wrap. Um, we had some goals. Um, we almost met all of them. We got most of the wiring laid in. We got all the sound treatment done on the floor area in the back here. Um, we still have to do the doors, the sound treatment in the doors tomorrow, first thing, um, and run some more wiring. We got 
mid base mid range center channel all that stuff prepped and ran loosely to the front um so we and and obviously we took the whole interior out of the truck too that was a big big thing um you can see it's all all apart um got the center console out obviously we had to do that to get sound treatment in here properly um, and also today I did a lot of basically digging and exploring and figuring out, you know, fitting all this equipment that we have in this truck. Um, I, I looked at the kick panel locations, um, determined that we already have a speaker adapter that fits, which is really awesome. I took a look at the doors in the front. Um, I'm still up in the air on if we're going to do a mid base in the door or not. We'll see. I have to think about that a little bit more. Uh, I did a little bit of research online about possibly finding the pins for this particular connector so we can do this properly by adding some, there's some pin locations open in here. So if we get the male and female pins for both sides, we could populate those and actually add a speaker wire into the door location and make it unplug and the doors will come off no problem. Um, didn't really do anything with the dash location yet today. I kind of just sat a speaker up in there. I don't think I did that on camera, but I think I'm gonna visit that tomorrow. Um, what else, Nathan? What else did we do today? That's pretty much it, I think. Found the radio. Found the radio. Oh yeah, the radio's here in the middle of the dash. We know we have these plugs, so that's a tomorrow thing. So I think we accomplished a lot in the short amount of time we worked on the vehicle today. It was actually kind of a short day. We started around, what, two or four or something like that. We had some other things to take care of before we jumped into this project. So tomorrow we'll continue with running wires. Um, Actually, our power wire will be here tomorrow, which will be great. So we can get the power done. We can get the rest of the wiring laid in and figure out how we're going to secure them to the factory channels and get everything. I think we need to rerun the center channel wire because it's a little shy. Um, so we'll just repurpose that to run. We're going to have to run. I can just open this. This door opens too. We gotta run, see this is the factory rear speaker wire. We're actually gonna run new wires from there all the way down here and out to the amplifiers. We have to run two there, two here. We'll go over the enclosure with you guys um, and then we can do some more treatment. I say we will probably end up sound treating the plastic panels in here. I'm pretty flimsy definitely help with a layer of sound treatment on those panels so we'll we'll dig into this more so tomorrow will be more treatment more wiring um and a little more design stuff good morning nathan good morning all right day two bronco project um we did get a lot of stuff done yesterday i think we uh we worked like half day on this thing maybe I don't yeah know. So we got the, as you guys can see, the whole interior is out. We did a lot of sound treatment yesterday. Um, and I did a lot of, you know, exploring and kind of figuring out how to fit all this equipment in this vehicle. Um, so there's a couple things that we did um, that we looked at. First things first, we were talking about yesterday. You guys know that we have a, there's a six and a half on each side in the kick panel. And we were talking about doing a an extra mid base driver here in the door. Um, we did some research. We looked at the the connector because you guys you want to look here, Nathan. These things are pretty cool. They literally you can unplug the door, and then there's a folding cap that seals it up when the door's off. Um, it looks to be like there's some open pins, but technically they're not even open. You can't repin the harness or add pins to these harnesses. So we feel like it's not worth, we're not gonna drill holes or, you know, drill out the connector and make these doors so they can't come off. So we're gonna actu actually 
we're not going to do mid-base drivers in these front doors. It just doesn't seem feasible. It was an idea, but it just it's just not possible to do it correctly. So we're going to we're going to get rid of that idea. So what we're going to do today since we're not doing a mid-base driver in these front doors, we're actually going to remove the rest of the other other three door panels and we're going to go ahead and do sound treatment on all the doors. So we're going to we're going to sound treat this outer skin, which is the real thin outside metal. We're going to sound treat this part of the door, the inner, and then we're actually going to sound treat the door panel. So we're going to do one, two, three layers of sound treatment on these doors. And we're actually going to repeat that process through all four doors of the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and get that knocked out here this morning first. Um, yesterday we determined that our half inch speaker adapters that we make for the Ford rear actually works perfectly for the front kick panel locations of this vehicle. So we'll probably just go ahead and get those installed today. Um, and then we're going to, I'm going to move, Nathan and I are actually going to work together. We're going to get the rest of the dash pulled apart and I'm going to work on our top left center right locations. Cause remember we're doing a, a three inch tweeter left and right. And then we're doing a three inch coaxial, um, illusion C3 CX in the center for center channel. So we have to design some templates on the computer and, and cut some templates and start figuring out how we're going to get that in there and make it look. Um, so I think today is all about the front stage and finishing up the door um, treatment and then we can move on to making sure we have every single wire ran to the back that we need. Like we still have to do the base knob. Um, we're going to manufacture a T-harness. There's a, there's a bunch of things to, to still do on this project as far as, you know, the basics of wiring and treatment and stuff like that. So we'll see what we get done with that, what we get done today with that. Um, but mainly I want to concentrate on getting the front stage done. So, and then we'll move slowly to the back of the vehicle. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So... We're getting starting on starting on started on <laughs> can't even speak this morning so we're getting started on um what we just talked about getting the rest of the doors sound treated and we're going to start getting up here on the sound treat or the, the sound treatment the uh the dash speakers um but first of all we uh yesterday we lifted this lifted this carpet up and took the console out couldn't get the carpet completely out of the vehicle because it's wrapped around the basically the center console of the of the truck you'd have to remove a lot of things to get it out so we actually just picked this up um, first thing we're going to do we're going to go ahead and vacuum the floor clean it up and we're actually going to put down some protection film on the carpet because as we work on this project we want to keep the carpet in new condition um, we get you know wire strippings and our feet and all that kind of stuff all over it so we're going to go ahead and get some of this uh protection film on the carpet to keep this carpet new as we work on this brand new bronco so we're going to vacuum it out now nathan's going to vacuum it out now and then we're going to prep the floor Okay, got the floor carpet protected so we don't soil the brand new carpet in here when we're working on it. So now we can go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pull these, pull the rest of the doors off and then we'll go into time warp fast mode and you guys get to watch treatment. So that's what's next. We'll get the rest of the doors off and get the rest of the doors treated and i'm going to start 
messing around with this dash opening. All right guys, so Nathan and I just took this, the rest of the dash apart, which wasn't that bad. Um, I had to loosen the airbags, which was kind of weird. It's a kind of a first to get the A-pillars out. 
So the dash topper was underneath the A-pillars on each side, so we had to pull all that out, got that all out, and now I got it. We got this over here on the bench. We got this whole top of the dash out of the truck. And looks like we can, we're gonna do our center channel here, All right? Center channel somehow. We're gonna put this guy here in the middle. And we got our other things going on. So we'll work on that. What's interesting that I noticed is you have a speaker provision here and it also looks to be there's a speaker provision here in the dash um maybe possibly the higher end b and o system comes with a center channel from factory so there is a provision for a speaker there um you'd probably have to get a whole new dash top with the speaker grill in it so that's i guess that's why it's so easily removable so now we got that out, I can work on the dash speakers more, and I believe at this time, I know Nathan still has to finish. He did those doors over there, they're all on and done. Um, we got this door, the original door we took off to do, and this back door. It was crazy if you guys hear that. That's the driver's door, it sounds like a tin can. And then we have this door. So, sound treatment, it works. Did all these, he did the panels too. So, nice and solid, they're back on, which is great. So, we got a mess in the car of pillars and visors and handles and stuff. So we're gonna clean this up and start rocking and rolling on the next thing.
Okay guys, we've been hard at work getting this, uh, all the wiring ran, finally finalized. We have all the wiring on this driver side. We ran it through the factory channel. Uh, we actually removed the factory channel and cut all the tie wraps and replaced all the tie wraps and got all these wires secure got wiring up here for the three and tweeter center channel three and tweeter on that side powers ran through the firewall all the way back up here all tie wrapped up tie wrapped up and out here to where the amps are gonna go um, same with this side over here you can see Nathan just got this panel put back in we did some sound treatment behind that panel got all the wiring It's actually a really nice spot for the wires to run out which is great um, and then same down that side all the wiring's done um, so yeah so Nathan's putting this up on the bench and we we added sound treatment to the back of this OEM panel which really makes a huge difference I mean before this thing was kind of dinky and hollow sounding now it's pretty solid, which is great. Um, he's about to grab the other one. I guess you guys will see that in some super fast time warp mode. Um, but yeah, all the wires are back here, 100%. Panels are going in. And I have been working on... Which I was sitting over here on the computer. You guys can see that I got basically the the enclosure laid out this is a like a side profile of the enclosure I took a PDF drawing of the woofer and resized it to the same dimensions as the sub so I could see how it fits in the enclosure you guys can see it's very tight as far as fitting into the enclosure but I got that all figured out um, and then I basically laid out all my parts so I have these are the sides of the enclosure these are the center um, pieces that go in between each they basically go here in between each woofer and these are all the other pieces here that we can cut out on the CNC machine and then we'll go ahead and <clears throat> cut all the angles on the table saw and we can get this enclosure put together. Um, I'm gonna go over the design a couple more times, make sure I didn't miss anything, make sure I'm happy with it. I'll, I'll sleep on it. We're not gonna cut it today, but I just wanted to get a head start on this enclosure while Nathan is working on the sound treatment. So that's what's going on right now. So I think I'm gonna start um, messing around maybe with the front doors or check out the kick panel location since we got most of the interior out so I'll, I'm gonna go over there now and see what I can mess with next basically at this point in the install and what's going on is we have to basically come up with a plan we have to look at all the different situations going on in the car like speaker you know if this we have to check if the speakers fit in the kick panel what type of adapter we have that'll work if we already have one made because um, we do make a lot of different ford adapters so we probably have an adapter that will work in here already i'm gonna go ahead and check that out um back from lunch so got the four inch speaker out um actually last night off off camera i stayed a little bit longer and i made a copy of the factory speaker which is kind of cool it's a little little adapter that holds a three inch mid so you guys can see that this got get this put in here if we can get it the right way so yeah, so I have a adapter. This literally bolts right in, and we could technically just drop the three-inch Focal driver into the dash location, hook it up, and put the panel back on. 
but we want to put a tweeter in here as well and we're going for more of a showy custom look so we're actually going to my idea is to let me take this back over to the bench so normally you can just remake a panel to hold the driver but in this case right we could fit the the mid would play through the grill opening as you can see right here that's fine and dandy but we also have a tweeter to install so what i'm thinking about doing is i want to mount do something custom here and mount the three inch driver and this tweeter possibly on this grill assembly <clears throat> or maybe in the dash and then make this a grill i'm not sure exactly yet i have to take a look at what to do um so now um i actually drew a i drew this shape last night um so now i can go over to the computer and i'm gonna actually I, I, I drew my rings for this, for this, and for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I haven't cut it out yet. Um, I'm going to cut it out of a piece of paper, basically, like a piece of poster board. We're going to make sure it fits on here, and then we'll start messing around on the computer and going through some ideas on how to, um, how I'm going to finish this, how I'm going to do the grill and everything, come up with the design. So... And then we also have to do, we're going to add this little driver to the center um, of the dash, which will make the this grill, the middle grill, and the right grill all match each other. And then, obviously, we have our six and a half inch, uh, half inch thick speaker adapter that fits this mid-base driver perfectly, and that should mount in to replace this factory driver you guys can see this this lines up this is basically our version it replaces that driver so we can mount our focal mid base driver in the stock location but we'll obviously do some sound treatment down in there and we'll get this is pretty much figured out so we're going to set that aside we don't need to worry about that right now that doesn't really take any design stuff so right now i'm going to go ahead and cut out a trim um initial piece and then i'll work on some design stuff in the computer and start playing around with some designs cut some things out on the laser come up with a plan and then execute it get this done so all right so now i'm here at the computer and i have my shape here and i'm going to basically just move it over move it right here on my table I have it my power set and everything and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get it all set up basically get it set up to cut right there and I actually have to focus the laser on our material Forgot to turn on the chiller so that the laser doesn't work without the uh, the water chiller on. It'll act like it's doing something, but didn't do anything. So I had to restart that until it started. Now go around it. We can cut this part out. this 
piece of paper it didn't cut perfectly because it wasn't sitting flat on the table this paper's a little warped so got this now that fits pretty good you guys can see it's a little off here I did really good on that one though got the outer shape pretty pretty good so so now I got this template and then let's go over to the car and get this grill in. And you guys can see I have a paper template. See if I can get a better angle. I got a paper template that fits perfectly there. Well, not 100% perfect yet, but we're gonna mold this thing in and get a three and tweet up here, and then do that side, the passenger side, and then we'll do something cool in the middle. So now I can start playing with um, go on the computer and start playing with some layouts and come up with a a plan so i'm gonna go do that and then i'll check back with you guys on what i came up with Let's check in here what's going on um, you guys know I made this paper template here that matched up to the dash and now I just um, spent some time to lay out the drivers and the dash and I cut out um, three different pieces of acrylic um, which I'm gonna pull off the laser now which I cut them off right here so I can pull these out Take it over here. Oh. So this is how this is gonna go. Possibly. So we got a base plate, a flush ring, and a trim. So I've kind of created this stack of plastic parts and come over here to the truck and I'm gonna set these in here so you guys can see what I got going on here this is not come around this way this is a stack of plastic that I've created for the three in the tweeter. Not sure exactly how I'm gonna mold this in yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. Actually, I can just come over here to this side. What are you guys doing? Measuring. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Let's put them in this side. Nope, it doesn't go like that. It goes like this. So we got one, two. Oh, maybe I should put this in the right way. Two and three pieces stacked on top of each other and this allows me to now I if I glue all these together I have a basically a a nice baffle a strong baffle to hold the speakers here in the dash and then I can make a go a custom grill 
and add a profile to this shape. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to work. All right, guys. Um, you saw that Nathan and I pulled this dash panel out, and I kind of moved my my workspace over here to the fab shop. Um, and you know, I cut out some parts. So I have the OEM grill, and then I on the computer I designed a couple parts. So the whole idea of this. You pop this back in pop this back in here so this this fits in here perfectly and so what I want to do is I want to mount the three and tweeter to this grill so I'm going to re reshape and remold this particular panel to hold a three inch and tweeter so what I went ahead and did was I I made a base this the right way a trim or a flush trim so this is about a about a half inch thick and I place this on here just for mock-up kind of did this in the car for you guys but I'm going to show you on the bench so right now I have three quarters of an inch worth of material and I'm thinking that's way too thick. As you guys can see, it's built up three quarters of an inch from the original height, which is over top of this, this high point right here. So what I'm thinking about doing, I really need to keep this quarter inch ring because I want to make a grill to fit in. Basically, it'll be a piece that fits in. This is a solid, this is basically the cutout. This is basically the cutout from this part. But what, what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll design a grill, a mesh basically on the laser or on in CAD and then cut it out on the laser. So this really needs to stay about a quarter inch thick. This, this, this uh, mid range, um, is about, it's a little shy of a quarter inch. Okay, we're back. Battery died. Restart. Okay, um, so factory piece, bunch of acrylic parts. So basically what I want to do is I want to try to bring this down. Right now I have this built up. <clears throat> with all my rings about three quarters of an inch. It's way too high, I need to bring it down more. I don't want this to be built up three quarters of an inch. I wanna bring this down a little bit, but I do need the quarter inch spacer here for the grill. I need the quarter inch for the, basically flushing of the speakers into the, um, into the panel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recut this out of an, a thinner eighth inch material that we can then bond here to the, um, the dash location. And then we can bond this to that piece of eighth and then bond this ring, try to bring this down a little bit. And then I can do some, some router work. We can glue all these together and do some router work and then we'll be able to epoxy this to the factory grill and then we can mold it in get it all nice and then go ahead and paint it to match primer it and then paint it to match this dash piece so i'm going to go ahead and cut that out now um, and i'll be right back and show you what it looks like then all right guys um recut this bottom layer in eighth inch so that fits here right on the dash and then we have our quarter inch spacer and our top ring for our grill insert. So now we just brought this down to about five eighths of an inch. And we're gonna see if we can do a cool profile on here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together um, and just kind of start playing with the with it um, just to 
get an idea on what it's going to look like. Um, this may not be the final, but I kind of have to start putting it together to come up with a, a final idea. So I'm going to go ahead and set this thing up and go ahead and glue these things together. So I'll set up the, the camera so you guys can see. What's going on here? Go ahead and get my supplies. I have this, this little box I use for making pressed grills, um, so I can use this box to actually align each part perfectly on top of each other um, and get these things glued together. So go ahead and remove the paper is pretty cool how this works if you guys ever work with any type of acrylic this is definitely awesome you can basically bond this into one piece of one piece of acrylic with this glue so we'll go ahead and remove the paper protective paper off of each one here and get that paper off. So get that piece off. So now we have this, and this will line up. Use my little jig box, and it allows me to line that up really, really well. And then you literally just take this, this, uh, it's like water almost. But it's actually acrylic glue. You can run a bead all the way around. <clears throat> Get it in the tweeter hole. See if I can get some down here on the edge. Get it all up underneath there. Same with this. Get it all in there. So I got that on there. And then I'll put my last layer on and place this ring gently on top make sure everything lines up force it and then let it just sit in place and then I can run another bead of glue underneath this and I can make sure it's pushed down Alright guys, um, this is the panel. This is basically a prototype. I'm pretty sure we'll end up rebuilding this um, completely over again on the final production because normally 
this inside edge I would normally do a chamfer on because I don't want a sharp a sharp edge meeting a sharp edge because we're doing a grill in here so we'll want to soften this edge with a small baby chamfer and then we'll do some router work around the side um, I don't have a lot of thickness this is about a quarter inch or actually it's about 0.2 um, so I'm gonna do a 22 degree chamfer around this this side here um, with this I'm gonna work my way up I'm not gonna go all in at once and go ahead and see what this looks like so we'll go ahead and set this up here for you and we're gonna we're gonna set this router there I'm not gonna do it all at once turn this on profile here to this um, let's walk back over here I got the um, the panel sitting here so you can go ahead and set that up on the on the dash again you guys can kind of see what that looks like it's really hard to see the the definition in it right now with it being just acrylic and kind of dirty and stuff but definitely playing around with it see what uh see what happens as we move forward it's just you know trying to figure out what looks best and what we can possibly do so um, i'm going to work on this some more and kind of figure out what's going on See if we can come up with something really cool so all right so you guys saw how that fit i'm gonna just go ahead and put a light scuff on this and probably paint it with some primer just um, a light coat of primer so i can start seeing the shape and take a look at it in the vehicle Okay, so we just did a light scuff on this, painted it with some some Sim high build primer. Stuff is awesome. Um, we'll go ahead and let this dry for a little bit. Um, and while this is drying, because I just wanted to get a better visual of this pod, so I'll let this dry and then I'll probably spray it with some sim or something just to give it some type of finished look and then start playing around with uh see if i like the way it looks in the vehicle um the back half of this is going to have to get molded into that plastic so um let's just let this dry for a while right now i'm going to go and draw a template for the center channel See if we can make a go ahead and make a start getting a head start on that center channel location. Um, get a basis done, and then we'll work on 
once I'm happy with this pod, we'll, we'll basically make a left and a right and mold them into the grills and go through that whole process. And then we'll also have a foundation for the center channel. And then we can make all three grills um, look very similar in design. So they, they look like they're all, all from the same, same mind and same concept. And, you know, we want it to all to look the same. So this is, looks pretty good so far. I mean, it's not perfect at all because it's just a quick sand and some primer. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, I'm back here. Um, okay, so Ben, you guys saw I made this <clears throat> prototype piece. Um, I put some primer on it and painted it black so I can kind of see. Obviously, we're not gonna finish it in black because it doesn't match this exact. This dash looks black in the truck, but once you put something absolutely black next to it, it's very gray. So we're gonna have to get some um, sim to match this dash panel because we're gonna wanna paint these so they look like a plastic part. Um, so I'm gonna go, let's walk over here real quick to the grab this. This is the factory grill. All right, so this factory grill pops in here, right? That pops in there like that. Initially, we're thinking of building this so this fits on top. I don't like it, it sticks up way too far. So, that's why we built a prototype, so we're gonna, Pop this back out, see if I can do it with one hand. One-handed. Get this popped back out. There we go, got that popped out. So this piece fits down in like that. I like that look a lot better. So with some thinking, I redesigned, instead of it's sitting on top of this. What we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna, we're gonna end up cutting the factory grill and making some modifications. I actually did it on the computer already. Um, so, we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut this out in a way and cut this bottom layer out in a way. So, this, back section of the grill that meets up over here will actually kind of fit in to this piece and they'll basically line up so let me it's it's very hard to explain let's go over to the um, the computer and I'm gonna go ahead and get these these parts lasered out and um, I'll basically be able to explain to you guys a little bit better on how this is going to go together. So that's why I make a prototype so I can look at it, decide what changes I want to make, and then we can go into final production of this part. So I'm going to go over here to the laser for my computer and going to see what I got going on here I got all these weird parts now you can see I did some some cutouts and stuff so got some material loaded in the laser I'm gonna go ahead and just frame this real quick make sure it's gonna fit on my part which it is so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and cut these now I'm going to go ahead and cut this over here. So we'll close this down. Turn on our air assist and vacuum. And press start. And the laser is going to go to town and cut these parts out.
All right, guys. Um, we just, you guys just saw we cut these, all these new parts on the laser, and now I'm gonna kind of show you what I was talking about as far as. Um, remember, we talked about this sitting on top of the grill and how I didn't like it, and then we, this I think that looks better. So I basically went back to the drawing board here and, and did some thinking about how this is going to work. So this is kind of how it's going to work. So this is layer one and I actually have a template here. So this actually, this fits to the front section of the grill. And if you guys look right on the other side, there's a clip here and a clip here. We want to leave these three clips intact. So I got this first layer and then the second layer is going to go over top. So once these are bonded together, it'll look like this from the back, right? So then what we're going to do, I made another template and this template we're going to attach to this factory grill and we're going to use the router table and the router and a flush trim bit and we're going to flush trim this right here running the bearing against the template and then it'll basically cut this nice and smooth and perfect so according to my calculations and everything once we cut this on the router this piece left will basically fit will butt right up against this 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 base piece will butt right up against this piece like a puzzle piece just replace this right here yeah we'll cut this off and this this plastic piece will replace this section so you guys can see this template is a quarter inch a quarter inch smaller set back the bit that we use is a quarter inch in diameter so the bit will run on this template and basically cut that material out, making it so this butts exactly up to that piece, right? So then this piece will fit down in. The grill section that we have left will clip in and fit down. And then the cover plate will then cover both pieces, our acrylic base and this part of the grill and then it'll sit down flush like this is what we're after and then we'll add our ring to the top of this and then overall we'll end up with a fitment a lot closer to this so it'll look like it's sunken down in there and it's not sticking up three quarters of an inch it'll look like it's you know three-eighths of an inch sticking up so maybe not exactly but that's the whole concept so that's what we got um, like I said we made the prototype making sure everything fits the way I want it to and I think I'm very happy with this after thinking about it going through some designs and tomorrow we're going to basically start putting all this together and go ahead and finish these left and right pods and then we will work once we get these left and rights done, then we'll move on to working on the center channel location. All right, today we're going to go from this to this and make it look cool. <laughs> How to fit that with that into that. You gotta fit these two things together. No, you gotta take this out and put these in, in this hole, and hopefully make it look cool. Uh oh! <laughs> Thank God we got new speakers! <laughs> Hello? Still works. Scrap it dropped. <laughs> uh oh. Thank God.
God we got new speakers. Now we just have to figure out how to put them in here. <laughs> I guess we'll have to make a cool pod that fits in here and holds the speakers. Maybe we'll do that today. Maybe we'll do that today. Hopefully we can figure it out. Okay, now I'm jumping over here to the fab shop and I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these dash grills. Um, I'm attaching my template to the factory piece with some tape, some double-sided tape, and actually a spacer block. And I'm gonna go ahead and router this section off the grill so we have this little tab and we'll keep you in the loop on this and do some some time lapse and go ahead and get these done. All right, so I went ahead and pulled out the speaker down here. I got a light so we can see what's going on. So got this speaker pulled out. This is the, the factory, it's a typical newer generation Ford speaker. 
4 ohm 25 watt. It actually looks a little bit better than most rubber surround polycone. It's alright. I guess. So we have and we make these. This is a six and a half inch adapter. And that'll looks like that'll bolt right in there. Mount right in there. No problem. We also make a this one's kind of used. We'll make some new ones or something for this, but this is a one inch thick adapter. So we have a half inch thick and a one inch thick. In the Ford trucks, um, the half inch is fine. Um, it's funny that these are actually, these were made for a Range Rover that we worked on, which is the same exact speaker mount. So the speaker is three inches deep. Um, let's grab a tape measure kind of just determine that by doing some measurements there in the um, shop for the door panel we're two and five eighths it's about yeah two and the lowest point we're about two and five eighths so I think we can just use this, this, uh, this half inch adapter. This driver should fit in there, no problem. You can kind of place it up in there. Yeah. You guys can see we got about a quarter inch or so. So our half inch adapter will work perfectly fine. So that's good. We already have that done. Um, so yeah, we can fit a fit the six and a half in there, no problem. What's cool about these speakers is the cone lights up when you put lights behind it. So we might do something like that. Who knows? Okay, so we've got the adapters. Well, the speakers onto the adapters soldered on. Got our quick disconnect Molex plugs. I wanna wake up with a bird. He will come into their home. And that's it. So now we have our Kevlar six and a half mounted perfectly into the kick panel. Quick disconnect plug, sealed up, it's perfect. Been over here and I have all my parts laid out for the enclosure and I'm about to go warm up the CNC machine and cut this thing out and start putting it together for you guys. Alrighty guys, we got the CNC warmed up. We got our sheet of three quarter inch MDF on the bed and we're going to go ahead and start this program and cut this enclosure out. You guys can see it right there, all the parts. So we'll just press start and the machine will take over from here. Alright guys, um, so got the enclosure cut out on the CNC machine and I got all these parts here, some more on that table over there behind you guys. Um, I just have it kind of just sitting um, here on the table. It's made up of quite a few pieces. Um, you guys can see that this is basically the side profile of the enclosure. Um, it's gonna have a step down here in the back of the enclosure. 
there's a step down here in the back of the enclosure back toward the back because we're going to end up putting there's going to be two amplifiers back here the three tens here and then we're actually doing a panel here in the front out of double three quarter inch wood and that's actually going to have four more amplifiers mounted here in the front so when you open the back of the car you'll see you'll see four amplifiers and the woofers will kind of be behind here behind the panel kind of hidden but so there's because there's a lot of equipment to fit in here so we wanted to um instead of doing a conventional you know three woofers firing back and putting all the amps here kind of wanted to break it up and make it look kind of cool so now i'm basically going to put it in super fast youtube mode and try my best to figure out how all this stuff goes together i designed it on the computer i've done a lot of other things in between um so i have to do a lot of angle cuts um there's actually some other parts that i'm going to have to cut to finish this um so that's what i'm going to go ahead and work on now all right guys i'm over here messing around with this trying to get some uh i'm actually cutting some some straight edge templates to align my vents and stuff on the laser but let's go see what nathan is doing over here let's see. no music alexa stop What's Nathan doing? What's Nathan doing? Nathan, what are you doing? He's wiring up the mid bases and the adapters. Yep. Soldering, and then what are you going to do right here? Put a uh, little quick disconnect plug on it. Like a Molex plug? Yep. Awesome. And then we'll put that in the car. And we will install mid base in there so and then we got this 12 gauge wire running to the back um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a connector on there so it's serviceable you can pull the driver right out of the kick and unplug it and service it if you ever have to so cool so that's what's going on in here he's just doing that stuff right now getting those in and waiting on the enclosure so we'll go put that thing together and then bring it over here and figure out how to mount it looks like we got mounting spots factory mounting spots all over the place so we'll be able to bolt this enclosure down to the vehicle so let's go back into the fab shop and get that enclosure put together
myself in one piece, trying out my heart as well. You couldn't be what we wanted you to be, the electricity.
All right, guys, back in the wood shop today. Um, you guys saw we put this enclosure together. Got it all, all together. Did some 45s here in the corners. I want this to kind of roll in and be kind of cool. So you'll see that come together. Just some ideas in my mind. Um, so now, since we got it all together, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and upholster, I'm gonna wrap the face of this enclosure actually I have to still do some some filler work and stuff to smooth this out perfectly and then we'll go ahead and wrap the front of this and all this whole area with some with some uh, vinyl that we chose for the build so we're gonna go ahead and get that all upholstered um, we're also going to we're gonna carpet with some trunk lining we're gonna carpet this section here and the sides of the enclosure just so it's nice and finished. And then we'll work on sliding it into the vehicle and getting it mounted. So stay tuned for this and it's gonna be a fun day. Alrighty guys, we got the box um, sanded in the corners. We did some body filler here to make this kind of roll roll out a little bit better. Um, added some reliefs, which you'll see what happens when I wrap the enclosure, why we did that. So now we're gonna spray this thing with some glue and go ahead and get this, this face area wrapped in vinyl and the rest of it wrapped in carpet. Um, got the enclosure sprayed with glue let it dry for a little bit got glue on the vinyl and now it's time to go ahead and wrap the face first in vinyl and then we're going to wrap the rest of the enclosure in trunk liner so i'm going to put this in fast mode and go ahead and wrap the enclosure
All right, guys, so got the enclosure completely finished off um, as far as upholstery on the enclosure goes. Um, got everything wrapped, This the chamber here wrapped, um, all the rest of the enclosure, the sides, everywhere else is carpeted in a trunk lining. Um, so now, tomorrow, or whenever, I don't know if tomorrow is going to happen, it's probably going to be tonight, um, tomorrow or tonight, we are going to basically place all the amplifiers in place here in the truck, um, which I can actually show you what's going to happen. We have 530 number one which is going to sit up here and then 530 number two which is going to sit oh my god it's going to sit right here we got two of the 535 channels sitting up here at the top and then what's next is we're going to work on so we're going to get all this stuff mounted in here and then we're going to have four amplifiers this size um, mounted across the back one two three four mounted across the back and we're going to work on getting all this stuff wired up and get it playing hopefully that's the plan a lot of work to do it's been a lot of fun i think the concept is going to be cool and then after all this is wired up and everything and everything is in then we'll start working on doing a trim panel over this completely so this will all be all the amplifiers and everything will be trimmed out and all the subs will be trimmed out and everything another thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load the three 10 inch subwoofers into the enclosure before we install this um the amp rack the amp rack is actually going to be wired up on the table separately so we'll be able to mount everything straight and nice across. Go ahead and wire everything up. Run the wires down each side and go ahead and hook them up to the processor and, and power distribution and everything that we'll do. So come along for the ride and check it out. All right, guys. We got the uh, the back section put in. Got all the wires hooked up to these amplifiers. Nathan's finishing up hooking up the subwoofer wires to these amplifiers, and we also got the subs mounted. So getting the back section together. And then we're gonna move to the rear 530s, which are actually running the front stage. This will be running the left side, this will be running the right side of the front stage. And then we got uh, Pro 110 for each subwoofer, so an individual amplifier for each 10. Each 10 is its own vented enclosure. And then we have a 410, four channel, running the center channel and rears, so. Coming out pretty awesome. Good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> All right, so we're back at it again today. Um, yesterday, we were late evening and we were very ambitious and we were like, oh, we're gonna get everything in and wired up and done and basically all we would have to do now is build the trim panel. But Nathan and I kind of got a little exhausted and decided to, uh, hang it up for the night and um, this is where we got last night um, 
you guys saw we wired up the four amplifiers for the back rack or the back amp mount got all the wiring to that side um, we had these 530s up here placed and we also ran some we did some wiring on those and then if you come around here you can see our our chaos I'll grab the camera from Nathan this is a late night wire party it's a complete total disaster of wiring back here but we're going to uh, make sense of all this and make it organized and make it amazing so the reason why we gave up last night on our initial plan is we were going to go ahead and mount everything and get everything hooked up but came to the conclusion that we needed to actually cut out the trim panel for the top first because as you guys can see right over here from the the back of these amplifiers to the seat there's a certain amount of space so we're going to go ahead and we have some some design work done for the trim panel so what we're going to do is um go ahead and get this trim panel cut out for the top so we know that the trim panel is going to come out to about this location of the amplifiers go back and end at the back of the seat and then once we get that in here we can actually design and build the rack for behind the chair to hold the power distribution two batteries a dsp some passive crossovers for the rear speakers and a whole bunch of other things so we got some got some design work done um early this morning and i cut out a bunch of different pieces of cardboard as you guys can see so in the initial design cut this piece doesn't really fit too well um and then i put that up there pass me that nathan there's no roof on here so then I came up with this piece, which fits a lot better. As you guys can see, there's going to be an opening. This is like half of it. The other, it would flip over and cover this side. But this piece fits over here. I reduced it in the back so it fits, you know, it lines up, it fits in there. Um, slopes down, there's an opening going across here for the subs, an opening for those amplifiers and this is going to allow us so what i'm going to do now is is go ahead and cut this out of a full sheet on the cnc machine then we can get this fitted properly work on making a panel back here and then once that's fitted and together we can actually design and build the amp rack for behind the seat and then we can go ahead and wire everything up so we had to uh take a take a step back and rethink what we were doing and get some sleep and come back at it and you know it's coming together so let's go ahead and cut this on the CNC work on getting it it's obviously not flat here it's kind of curved so we're gonna have to figure out how to make that happen and uh, keep moving so stay tuned all right guys so here is the design of what we're about to cut out on the CNC machine. I got it all, all the tool path set. Um, I'm sending it to the machine now. So we're going to go into the fab shop and go ahead and press play and cut this thing out. Okay, in the wood shop, the fab room, whatever we want to call it today. Um, feels like I was just here five minutes ago, which is always fun. So got a sheet of wood. We cut some other things out of this one so we have room up there in the corner to cut it so we're going to go ahead and turn on the dust collection turn on the cnc and we got the file i got the file loaded in the machine it's good so i'm going to go ahead and first turn on the vacuum table make sure my material is sunken down to the table and it's not going to move
dee 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 dee. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, we just cut this out on the CNC machine. This is um, we made some cardboard templates and came up with a design. Um, now we just need to go see if this actually fits in the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and take it over there, and then we're going to work on cutting this and bending this to the angle of the actual enclosure because it comes straight back and then kind of slopes off in the rear so we have to score this panel to get it to to bend over so we're gonna try our best to make that happen um let's go see if it fits didn't even think about that <laughs> Looks like it fits, which is a good thing. So we're one step closer. It does not fit exactly to the panel, but we will get to that and we'll go ahead and mold this in to fit exactly into the sides of the vehicle. But now what we need to do, if you guys look down here, there's a gap right here. This basically needs to, to be uh, scored in the rear so the panel sits down and comes down at the angle of the enclosure. Because this is not perfectly flat, it actually slopes back. So now we're gonna have to figure out how to um, make that work. Thanks for staying tuned. Um, so this is what we got going on here. Um, Got a bunch of stuff done. We cut out the top piece on the CNC. Um, also the back piece on the CNC. You guys can see this is just roughed in here. Still a lot of work to go. Um, we laser cut our acrylic insert that fits here in the top. It's lightly sanded and it's actually it's crazy is this is actually curved right here so we had to I scored the back of the acrylic on the laser and then set it up in a jig and actually bent the acrylic with some heat still got to work on that some more we got to do some router work on it and a bunch of things like that so got a lot done on the trim it still needs obviously a lot of work it has to fit into the vehicle you guys can see it doesn't fit into the vehicle quite yet there's some gaps this is all taped up temporarily. We'll go ahead and get that molded into the vehicle. The other thing that we have to think about is once this molds into the vehicle, will it come out of the vehicle? So, and at this point, I don't think it will. So I have to think of a creative way to fit this properly and still make it come out of the vehicle so it can be serviceable in the future. So let's go around to this side. We got this is what we were talking about earlier is creating a space we made this wedge piece that's going to mount in here this is where the the uh two batteries the dsp and the power distribution are going to go so the the passenger side will be signal um, distribution via the digital signal processor from moscone and on this side the driver side we will be doing hooking all this up which is about 70 feet of four gauge so we have a lot of power to hook up um, a lot of RCA's a lot of signal a lot of stuff is actually going to go on back here and then once it's installed we can make a trim panel um, to trim all this out back here so it's nice and finished so that's what we're working on right now all right guys we're going to go ahead and start getting this rear section mounted we're going to use our Craig we used Craig jig do pocket holes around this trim piece um, we're going to go ahead and mount this to the back of the enclosure um, with these 10 screws I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted and then go ahead and start working on getting everything mounted in here that needs to go in this back section so Nathan can go ahead and wire it up
Hey, Nathan, can you hold that for me? Thank sure you, Nathan. Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a lot going on. We've been going through this day by day, but doing some stuff behind the scenes here. Um, kind of see what we got going on here. Underneath all this plastic and tape is the trim panel that we've been talking about. You know, we bent the plexiglass, did a bunch of cool things with this thing. Um, we're kind of in a crunch. We have to get this thing done. Um, so we're going to do a lot of time lapse um, from now on. Um, basically what we have left is I'm bondo matching the trim panel into the vehicle. You guys can see it's all taped up. There's also some plastic here covering up the amplifiers and all that stuff so I don't get body filler on that. So that's what's going on back here. I'm going to bondo match this and work on these side pieces. All, all bunch of stuff going on. Um, Nathan is up front here putting in all of our Molex connectors on all of our speaker wires across the dash so left center right um, basically everything's wired up already uh, trim panel needs to be molded in um, I have to work on the dash panel we're gonna work on the dash panel we're gonna mold in the trim panel we're gonna wrap the trim panel we're gonna install speakers we're gonna just crunch time do a lot do a lot of time lapse I'll try to bounce in and kind of explain what's going on um, throughout the the day and the evening as we get this thing done. So uh, stay tuned. Okay. Hey guys, we're out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we just flew out here and met the Bronco. Um, it's out here uh, for its first event. So 
we finished up the project and I just basically want to go over the project show you guys what we did real quick and um, yeah we got birds and sunlight <laughs> and it's cold out here actually <laughs> so um, let's take a look at what we did so get in there with the camera so we did a full on Focal Moscone system um, Kevlar three ways in the front, center channel, rears. We we custom built, you guys saw in the video, we custom built these dash pods for the the Kevlar speakers and the illusion speaker in the center of the dash. We did full sound treatment front to back. Um, so it basically looks very OEM there in the in the cab of the vehicle. Um, in the back of the vehicle, not so much factory looking. Actually, it doesn't have any space for anything anymore. It's just a bunch of really awesome audio gear back here. So we got There's 3,000 watts of power running the front stage and 3,000 watts running these three 10 inch subwoofers um, custom-made trim panel to Kind of showcase all this equipment. This vehicle is actually a demo vehicle for uh, Focal so That's why we did a lot of gear back here and it really does sound amazing. We can't wait to see people's reaction from this. So, thanks for watching. Um, check us out. You know, we, we, we normally do more of the Ford stuff as far as trucks. This is kind of uh, something new for us. We might have some parts coming for this vehicle here soon. So, uh, stay tuned and check it out.